Well, here I am at this anachronistic video store. Now, what should I see? Hmm, the Toilet Saga? Breaking Dumb? No. The Dork Knight Reprises? No. Hey, Groundhog's Day, starring Twilight Sparkle. That sounds fun. Okay, all kidding aside, the finale starts with Twilight giving the keynote speech at Hogwarts about the magic of cutie marks. And she tells the story about how her and her gal pals all got their marks simultaneously. But when she returns home, she finds none other than Starlight Glimmer. Just chillin'. Like you do. And Starlight has rejiggered one of Star Swirl's old time spells to send her back to when Little Dashy first did that sonic rain boom. And if that event changes, the future does as well. So now Twily has to experience a series of bleak futures that range from dystopian to apocalyptic. Like the one where the Unicorn King of the Crystal Empire wages unceasing war against the free ponies of Middle Equestria. Or the one where the Changelings have control of the land and no pony can be trusted. No pony! So they trust a zebra instead. Good call, guys. Good call. Or the one where the night will last forever! Go Luna Republic. Or the carefree whimsy of Discord's potential future. And every time Twy and Starlight fight. But eventually Twily figures out that this isn't going to work. And she drags Starlight back to the future. And then they talk and long story short, Starlight's a good guy now. Lame. Oh don't you start. You got so many grim dark futures out of this. My Little Pony, the cutie remark, is a lot of fun. One of the best things about it is all the potential futures. The King Sombra one was probably the best as we got the most epic pony war out of it. But it was also cool to see Zakora become the leader of the resistance against the Changelings. And Nightmare Moon in full-on Power Rangers villain mode was the <laughs> And you know, even the really short ones are great. Like Discord's future, but we kinda know what that looks like. And I also really liked seeing the Flim Flam Brothers go full Onceler. But t rex future was maybe a little bit underwhelming. He's just kinda kaijuing it up. But I choose to believe that that blasted wasteland Starlight and Twilight ended up in was the end result of t rex finishing his work in Equestria. But you know, all of these awesome cameos really overshadow the actual villain, which is a shame, as Starlight is actually really neat. First, she's got some super awesome amazing magic. She can use telekinesis to fly like pumpkin cake, and she freezes Twilight in a block of ice. All we have to do now is find Starlight and- I was frozen today! However, the biggest problem in this episode is Starlight's heel turn to the good side. It's not sudden, but it's really too complete. And that's not what I would want for Starlight. She was so strong in her convictions, and one of her biggest strengths as a villain is that she's kind of got a point. It isn't fair that some people are smarter, stronger, or have more than others. And I think the episode would have been improved if Starlight would have agreed that Twilight and her friends are really important, but keeps her own ideals. Also, the inciting incident in Starlight's life is when one of her friends got his cutie mark and then moved away. That's... The lamest villain motivation on the show. I was gonna say far-fetched. Also, how did she not know that trying to change the future would lead to horrible, horrible consequences? Now, let's talk art. We get some amazing visuals out of the various futures, like King Sombra's evil army, the Imperial Guard-esque look of all the ponies in war-torn Equestria, Zakora's tribe was neat, and the cold dark look of Nightmare Moon's Equestria was awesome. Action-wise, there's a pretty cool fight between Starlight and Twilight, with magic lasers. Magic lasers everywhere. Now, it doesn't hold a candle to t rex versus Twilight, but honestly, what does? Finally, the episode ends with a song. The tune is nice and upbeat, but what makes it work as part of the episode is seeing Starlight hanging out with the main six and returning to her former village. Okay. Now it's time to break down the good and the bad in My Little Pony, The Cutie Remark. On the good side, the time travel gimmick gave us all kinds of fun potential futures, showcasing the baddest of the bad. Starlight is a competent match for Twilight, and the two-parter ends with a sweet song. On the downside, it's a shame a villain with as much potential as Starlight Glimmer is so overshadowed by the big boys and girls. And unfortunately, her motives are as weak as her convictions. But that's all kinda incidental. So I give My Little Pony, the cutie remark, a 4.5 out of 5. 
Now, if you're interested in more reviews of anime, movies, TV shows, comic books, or video games, check out my channel on YouTube at StupidPrivate913, or find my Facebook and DeviantArt pages for video updates and more. Thank you for watching. Hey kids, today's show is brought to you by the letter 4 and the number potato! I'm a stupid private.